Alright, so I've really been into flashlights for a long time now, and I've wanted to have a channel where I could review them, but I just haven't. So, recently I decided, you know what, what the heck, why not? So, here's my first video, hopefully it doesn't suck. Okay, so I figured for my first video, I might as well do the first high-end flashlight I got. So, this is the Thrunite TN11S. Now, I got this flashlight in, like, the late summer of 2014. Uh, since then, it was replaced by the Thrunite TN11S version 2, and this one went out of production. And then, I think in the later part of 2015, they stopped making the TN11S version 2 and replaced it with the TC10 version 2. So you can't get that one either. So if after this review you want one of these, you're going to be pretty much out of luck. But anyway, this is pretty much the standard Thrunite box. The font they use is a little bit different than the ones they use on the newer boxes. This is the TN12 box, and you can tell they have a slightly different font. Also, this box is a little bit cheaper, but it doesn't really matter. Anyway, so inside of this box, this is a pretty nice cardboard box, by the way. But inside of here, you have, under this piece of foam, you have the flashlight itself, which when you first get it, it doesn't have the steel pocket clip, but you have that. And then underneath this piece of foam, you have... The instruction manual, which is fairly informative, um, the it's pretty poorly written. You can tell it's written by a bunch of Chinese people that don't speak English very well, but it has all the it has all the information you need on it. And then underneath you have the holster, which is a pretty nice holster. It's open bottom, so when you put the extension tubes on, it'll still fit inside of here. And then inside the holster, you get this bag, which includes the lanyard, which I'll talk about in a bit. Um, you get the extension tubes, which I'll talk about that in a bit too, and you also get some spare O-rings and tail cap covers. So anyways, onto the flashlight itself. Okay, so this flashlight is very well built. It's made out of solid aircraft grade aluminum, and it has type 3 hard anodizing on it, a fairly thick, durable coating, and it's nice and matte. It's not shiny like the TN12 is. As you can see, without the extension tubes, it is about six inches long and about an inch and a half wide. So this is a pretty large flashlight. It's not going to work very well in a pocket, especially with this grip ring and this big crenulated bezel. But, I mean, if you want to do that, it'll work. Starting with the back end, it has two buttons, a tactical style momentary forward clicky switch and just a clicky side button. Now the switch on the back is very nice feeling. It's actually probably one of my favorite switches I've ever used on a light. Uh, momentary is very easy to use. You don't have to press too far. Um, very easy to press. The side button is just kind of normal. It's easy to locate in the dark. It's even easy to press with gloves, so that's not a big problem. What is a problem is this rubber boot that's on top of this side switch will come off pretty easily, so um, you should be aware of that, but performance is fine for both of them. As you move down the barrel, you can see it has this tactical grip ring, which is made, also made out of solid aluminum, and it works quite well. It gives you a nice good grip on the light. And it has this hole here where the lanyard goes in. I'll talk about that later, but uh, it is supposed to come off, and it used to come off, but I don't know what happened. It's, basically, it's pretty much impossible to get off now. So, yeah. Not that I probably ever would take it off, because when, when you do, it leaves some threads exposed, and it's pretty ugly looking, but it, it, you can take it off if you want. And below that, there's this steel pocket clip here, which when you first get the flashlight, it's not attached. You have to attach it, and it is a massive pain in the butt to get it on there, and it scratches up. I don't know if you can see that, but it scratches up the anodizing. And then on the barrel, you can see it through night with their little slogan, guiding you through the night, TN11S, with the serial number. Um, and this knurling on the body is very good. It is, gives you a really good grip on the flashlight, but it's not like painful to hold or anything. And then on the head here, you can see there is this heat sinking, which works pretty well. This light does get fairly hot on high. It doesn't take too long to get hot, but this does help somewhat. It's not like the TN12 that just gets super hot really fast. And then it has this anti-roll piece right here, which, yeah, that's immensely effective. 
And then it has the steel crenulated bevel, which is also very nice. It's not too sharp, but it, it would certainly work if you had to use it for whatever. And then, as you can see, this lens is cracked, just ignore that. I'll talk about that later too when I get to durability, but aside from that, uh, this lens is probably the best I've ever seen in a flashlight because it has, if you can see that, it has this really, really nice anti-reflective coating, double-sided, so it's a dark purple, so it's very effective, and the lens itself is super clear. So this is, it's just a really nice lens. It's obviously delicate, uh, but it is really high quality. Um, the reflector is pretty, pretty deep. It's a smooth aluminum reflector, and as, I can, as you can see at the bottom there, is a Cree XML U2 LED. Um, this is a cool white light. I don't know if they offer the original TN11S in neutral white, but this one is a cool white, um, and it has a very nice beam pattern. So, as for the extension tubes, there's not a whole lot to talk about. Inside it has this plastic barrel. Now this can take either 118650, two CR 123s, or if you use the extension tubes, you can use three CR 123s, four CR 123s, or two 18650s. So there is a lot of versatility as far as that goes. And you can put these, these are actually very hard to get apart, first off. Yeah, I can't get that apart. But <laughs> these are two different extension tubes, so you, you could put both of them behind the body. Um, you could put one here, one here, both of them here. I just put them both on the end like this because it's easier, but anyway. Now, all of the threads on this flashlight are square, square cut, and they are very high quality threads. Only the threads on the bottom part of the actual barrel, the, uh, the main body tube, I should say, are anodized. All the other threads are just bare aluminum. So, if you, this light does offer physical lockout, but only on this part of the barrel. Um, as you can see here on the inside, the spring in the head is gold-plated. The spring in the tail cap is not. Um, but it does have two springs at least, so it does offer a, a bit of extra shock resistance for the battery, and you can use flat top batteries. This also does have an internal uh, electrical reverse polarity protection, so you can, if you put in the battery wrong, it won't explode and kill you. Uh, what else? Well, that's a problem. The threads are lubricated, at least at first, so... I don't know if you can hear that. These are extremely smooth threads. So if nothing else, you pretty much will never have to worry about wearing these threads out. They're very high quality, and as they all have O-rings. This is very well sealed against water. In fact, I think the... none. I, I wouldn't worry about water getting in anywhere on the flashlight body. I would maybe worry about this side switch, though. It's not the most well protected, but... Uh, one thing that is a little bit annoying is this grip ring right here. Like I said, you could, you can normally take this off. Yeah, you can see I have lube on my hand now from the threads. But uh, anyway, you can normally take this off, but like I said, whatever happened is pretty much cemented on there. But even if you do, it's kind of ugly. So I don't know if I would, I would just rather have it. It's not that bad, really. And same with the clip, I just don't take it off, even though it's completely useless. Anyway, so usually when I hold this light, I hold it back here like this, which gives me easy access to the button. Sometimes I hold it up here like this, um, or I hold it like this. Now, when you hold it like this, it's pretty difficult to get to this button to change the modes. You kind of have to like stretch your finger. I just usually use my pinky and it, it works. Um, this flashlight doesn't have a whole bunch of modes though, so at least you can get where you're going pretty easily. Now, as far as accessories go, because I'm going to talk about that before I talk about the light because I'm going to keep you all waiting. So it comes with this holster, which is a high quality holster. I mean, it's not spectacular, but it's good quality. It has this hole in the bottom, so you will be able to fit the light in, uh, even with the extension tubes on. It doesn't really like 
the tactical grip ring kind of makes that bulge and it makes it hard to get in, but it'll it'll still go in. It's pretty difficult when you have the lanyard. Actually, let me get the lanyard out. Uh, well, first, the back of this has a button and Velcro to attach it to your belt, so very secure. And then there's another loop underneath. So there's lots of options to secure it to your belt or whatever, and it works very well. So this lanyard I have to talk about because this is a high-quality lanyard. Um, it feels good in the hand, like... This is a good material, and these are, well, you only really need one of these, but, I mean, they work. But the problem with the lanyard is this, which would be fine, except that it goes in right here in the tactical grip ring, which is not only annoying because, well, one, it's just kind of, okay, got it on there. It, it seems like it would be secure, and it... For the most part, it is. I mean, it, it holds the light. It's pretty sturdy. It's not delicate or anything like that. But there are two problems. One, it scratches up the tactical grip ring. So if you care about that, it does that, and that's annoying. But two, no matter which way you put it in, whether you put it in like this, or if you flip it around, for some reason, it just it doesn't want to stay. As you can see, there's not a whole lot. There's not a very big lip there. So I can't many many times I've had this lanyard on and I thought it was fine but then it would just randomly come off so it comes off it it looks like it's pretty secure but unfortunately it does come off very easily so if you were to the if you really needed this to not come off then you well you pretty much be out of luck you would just lose your flashlight and then bad guys would get you and you'd be dead so the the lanyard is not that great the holster is good um it's kind of a pain to get the light in the holster when you have the lanyard attached as well but that works is there anything else to talk about in the build yeah now I, as um you you may have noticed when this flashlight was in single 18 650 mode the side button lined up nicely with the pocket clip uh I, well and with the side of this the head um where it's now is all over here which i'm i'm sure you could fix that but would look as pretty. If, if that happens to bother you, then that would bother you. Now, I, bef I, I need to talk about the durability of this light, because through night is... People have pretty split opinions when it comes to the durability of their lights. I mean, they're, they're well built. They're made out of aluminum. They use quality materials. Uh, all the connection points are very secure. It's very well machined, threaded, anodized. But still, people have had problems with the lights. Now, this light, for me, has been through a lot of abuse. As you can see, it has a lot of ding marks on the anodizing. Actually, it it does kind of annoy me. There was... The anodizing on the extension tubes was not perfect when I got it new. But, uh, yeah, this flashlight... It, it doesn't even look like it's seen that much wear, but it uh, it's been it's been abused pretty bad but it still works totally fine. And I actually, this light I've had for almost, I don't know, like two and a half, two and a half, three years, something like that. Um, it was a period of time in which I actually lost this flashlight for like, I don't know, anywhere from three to six months, I don't remember. But it was on a school bus for that amount of time. No, Somehow no one found it and then for that long and then someone got it to me, which is a, uh, kind of surprising, but um, it survived all of that. As you can see, the battery's in there a long time, so it kind of bent this spring there, which is a shame. It doesn't really matter, but... Um, and then, I mean, this thing has been smacked against concrete many times. I've dropped it a few times. I had, my friend had this in his, po this entire gigantic thing in his pocket, and he slipped, and he banged it on the concrete right here, which actually didn't even do as much damage as I thought it would. But then, literally the day that I had this flashlight returned to me, I dropped it, and it landed. It wasn't even on concrete. It was just, like, on the ground. It, I mean, it was hard ground. I don't know what it was. It was, like, weird. But anyway, I dropped it, and it landed right here on the head. Or right here. And cracked the lens. And, I, again, I don't, I don't know if you can see it, but there are little pieces of glass floating around in there, and there's a 
small hole in the edge, like right there. So this, the water proofness of this has pretty much been sacrificed, but, um, and again, you can see that reflective coating, that's really nice. So it still worked. This flashlight still works, which is good. And Through Night does have a two year, no, well, it does have, it has a two year free replacement. I pretty much just missed that two year free replacement with this light. Not that it matters because I don't know if I would have gotten another one because they don't make it anymore. I don't know, but they have a lifetime limited warranty where they'll replace any part of the light if you pay for it. I just have not bothered to ask them to replace this because seeing as this flashlight still works, I, I just haven't seen, I've just been too lazy really because I don't want to let go of it because I really love this light. Spoiler alert for the end of this review, I really love this light. So the durability of this light is very good. The dependability, well, I'm going to get to that bit in the UI when I get to the user interface, that is. It's a very well-built light, and it can stand a lot of abuse, but just be mindful that this lens does not is not very well protected. Even though this is a fairly thick bezel around here, I imagine this aluminum part here is probably not very thick. It's probably doesn't offer a lot of protection, so it just took one hit right here, cracked that lens. Um, but I wouldn't worry about it like just randomly dying for any reason or anything like that. So, I it's a dependable light. It's not a surefire or anything, but it's pretty durable. And now, finally, getting to the lighting characteristics. Now, the inside of the entire barrel all the way through is anodized, so that is very nice. I'm not going to do single 18650 mode because it's just a waste of time. And these are just 2600 milliamp hour Olight batteries. These aren't the best batteries, but that's just what I've always used with this light. So that's what I'm going to. This is what I'm going to continue to use for this review. So they both go in there in series. Now, one thing I really like about this light, if there haven't been batteries in it for a while, and you put new ones in, it'll like flash briefly just to let you know that the batteries are in it and that they're, uh, see there we go, and that they are working properly so that is a really nice feature that I like. Now the lighting modes of this are pretty simple. You just have momentary on off, constant on off, nothing exciting going on there. And then on the side button while the flashlight is on, um, you press it once to go to medium mode high, and then back down to low. And it does have mode memory, so if you turn it off on a mode and turn it back on, it'll stay where it was, so that is nice. And then strobe alert, when the flashlight is off and you press the side button, it'll go into strobe mode. And then if the flashlight is on and you press and hold for about a second, yeah, then it'll go into strobe. And this is a really, really disorienting strobe. It's, I'm completely blinded right now. As you can see, it cycles from a really high rate to a really low rate, and it's very disorienting. And that is one of the best features about this light, is the strobe mode, which makes this a really excellent tactical light. And now I need to make my camera focus again. Hold on. So anyway, that is a really nice feature of this light. Now, with the extension tubes, I don't know what the stats are with one 18650, but from my experience, it's a maybe a little bit more than half, both run times and output levels. So low mode is 9 lumens for about 5 days. Medium is 424, I believe, for about 4.5 hours. And high is 830 lumens for 80 minutes. And so far as I can tell, this light is current controlled, or at least mostly current controlled. So as the voltage of the batteries drops, then the light stays the same level, and then once the batteries are dead, then just the light is dead. So it, it has pretty much a constant brightness throughout the whole runtime of the batteries. I can't confirm that, but from what I can tell it is. I don't usually run the batteries very low on my lights, but I haven't ever noticed it dropping in brightness in all the time that I've used it, so. And strobe mode, eh, doesn't matter how strobe mode lasts, no one cares. Now, like I said, this is a cool white light. This uses the Cree XML U2. Um, which is still a nice LED, 
Now, I can't give you a very accurate representation of the tint in this video. It looks far bluer on camera than it does in real life. But the tint is a very nice white light. It's not perfect. It is slightly... Well, you can't see this at all in the video, but it is slightly purplish around the edges and slight, like, just the tiniest bit greenish on the inside. But it's not enough to bother, to be bothersome. And the beam is very smooth, but it's not perf... Sorry, it's just hard to get represent this properly on camera. But the beam is very smooth. It's not perfectly smooth. Um, but it is, again, smooth enough that in actual use, it's not bothersome at all. And even with the cracked lens, it's actually still pretty nice, which, I mean, this cracked lens is, I am going to get that fixed eventually, but, and then as you can see, it does have, it has, hold on, I'm going to refocus the camera, see if I can get this to, I'm going to change my white balance real quick. So changing my exposure, just to, here we go. So this is a little bit more realistic. As you can see, this is, mm, it's not like a super throwy light, but it's definitely more on the throwy side. It has a very nice concentrated hot spot, which has a pretty nice hard edge on it. A little bit, it looks a little bit softer on camera, but it is a nice defined edge. And then it has a bit of a corona, and then it goes nicely into this, into the spill, which again is very smooth. The corona has a bit of a, uh... I don't know, it's a little strange looking, and so is the hot spot, but again, it doesn't, it's not bothersome in real life, and you can see I got grease from the threads on my desk, and I'm going to have to fix that. Anyways, this is definitely on the throwy side. It, through night claims, on maximum, it will throw for about 354 meters, I think. Um, so this, it, it is a very, I really like this beam, because... Even though it's quite throwy, it's not so throwy you can't use it for normal people things. Um, but it's not too floody either. It's a nice balanced beam. I still like the beam on the TN12 a little bit more. I like I prefer a bit more of a floody beam. But uh, for what this does, it is it is very good at it. So as you can see, it has. Well, now that the lens is cracked, it's much worse. But it has a lot, uh, it has a very distinct periphery, which is either good or bad, depending on how you look at it. But at least when the lens is not broken like it is, um, there are like two distinct rings on the outside, which are probably caused by the reflections off of this bezel. And then when you close it, in actual use, you can see a little bit of like that four-sided shape in the periphery. But it doesn't matter because you never use a periphery of the beam for anything. So, that's pretty much irrelevant, but might as well mention it. And again, this light, it heats up pretty quickly. Like, maybe after a minute of runtime, it would be noticeably warm in your hand. And actually, when you put it on your hand, you can definitely feel the heat coming off of it. It won't start to hurt. The TN12, that light gets uh, very hot. In fact, you can actually pop a balloon with that light. So this is not as hot as that one, probably because it's not as concentrated, because that light has a smaller uh, diameter than this one does. So I, I may or may not do uh, night shots of this light. I'm just, I don't know, no idea. I might. But uh, the beam on this is very good, very nice multi-purpose beam. Uh, and if you're using this for, like, a tactical purpose, this is, well, I don't use it tactically because I'm not, I have, I don't you regularly get attacked by bad guys or have to, like, arrest people or anything like that, but, uh, it, in my mind, at least, this is pretty much the ideal tactical light. Um, it's nice and large, so it's, you know, easy to hit someone with if that had to, if you had to. In one times the 18650 mode, it has this grip ring, so that works really well. Instant strobe mode. I love that about this light. The instant strobe is awesome. And this beam profile is very, very good for that purpose. Nice and throwy, but still useful for somewhat up close. This isn't really an up close, super up close kind of light. It has no moonlight mode. 
this nine lumen mode works quite well, and I do like that this. Well, as far as, also as far as being tactical goes, I do like this that this light only has the three modes plus strobe. It allows for very fast switching between modes, and you know, if if you leave it on low and you really need high, then you could just turn on cycle really really quickly. You don't have to. So anyway, it's not like the TN12 or even really any other light. It's easy to get to all the modes. There's not too many of them. They're nice and spaced. I think medium mode is a, it's a little bit more than half as bright as high mode is, which makes high mode almost feel redundant sometimes. I think it would be kind of nice if medium were a little bit lower, like maybe 350 lumens or so, because high mode just doesn't feel that much brighter than medium does. But it, they're still quite well spaced. It's not. It's not too bad. So again, for tactical light, this is great. But however, as good as that is, as nice as it is to have only a few modes, this light does have some quirks. And I'm not sure if I'll be able to replicate all of them on camera, but it's not a flawless operation. Um, the, the first thing... Actually, no, I need to leave it on. So, since the threads are only anodized right here, you can lock it out again. So when you lock it out, and you twist it, you can see it doesn't immediately turn on. Sometimes it'll flash and then turn on, sometimes it just waits to turn on. So that's kind of weird, I don't know exactly what the deal with that is. But uh, again, the operation's not perfect. And strobe alert. This is kind of be painful, and I don't know if I'll even be able to replicate it. But sometimes when you strobe it, I think when it's strobe and you turn, sometimes when you st okay, I know I'm sorry. I'm I'm probably blinding you, and I'm not gonna be able to do it. Anyway, sometimes when this light is either on strobe or if it's on a lower mode, and you switch it up to high but you press a little bit too long afterwards and it goes into strobe. Just, I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it seems to have to do with strobe mode. Sometimes this light will just turn off. Like when you're strobing, like, like that. There we go. So when it's on and then you quickly let go and, go and strobe it, It does weird things. Just it's not flawless operation. So if you know you were absolutely need something that would just work flawlessly for some sort of tactical application, or if you just hate having to deal with stupid flashlights, then this might not be the absolute best option. It's not a deal breaker, but it is something to consider. So overall, the build quality of this light is very nice. The actual lighting qualities are very nice again this does have a good a great warranty so I can replace that lens if I feel that it's necessary um, really the only issue the only complaints I have with this light are the UI little UI hiccups and this what do you whatever you call it this rubber boot that that can come off easily um, now the, the tactical grip ring, oh, and this lanyard system, that kind of sucks a lot. Um, this light can't tail stand, but it, it's not, yeah, that sh it should be obvious that it won't tail stand, it doesn't need to. Um, the tactical grip ring, again, is a bit of a problem because mine is cemented on for some reason, but if you do take it off, it has that, those ugly threads, and you have to like take an o-ring off. To get it off so it's just kind of annoying um, this pocket clip is high quality it's a good pocket clip um, it's not black I know a lot of people seem to like matte black pocket clips I actually prefer them to be shiny like this but it is it's it's a good pocket clip I just don't think you're gonna need it it helps with the anti-rolling somewhat set it down too hard and then yeah okay so
overall, this is a very high quality light. Now, like I said, you can't get it anymore. I'm sure, I mean, you could get it secondhand, uh, but they don't make it anymore, so you can't buy it. I bought this from Amazon. You can only buy through nights from either through night or Amazon or secondhand, I guess. Um, I bought this off at Amazon. When I bought it, it was about thirty-five. Yeah, thirty-five dollars. So really, really great value, if you ask me. But again, they they replaced it with the version two, which was more or less better in every way. It repl it fixed this uh, boot cap issue. It was thicker and tougher. I saw some uh, durability tests of that one. It seemed a lot tougher than this one is. Not that this one is flimsy by any means, but it's not like... Again, it's just it's not a surefire, that's for sure. Water resistance is great. Even with this, it will it can handle to be submerged up to that... I've never submerged it more than a couple feet, but it, it can definitely handle that. So overall, what is my opinion of this light? I really, really like this light. Even though it's not, from a technical standpoint, it's not the best, I just really like um, mostly the UI modes. Uh, and just the form factor of this light is great. I know there are other um, lights that have two 18650s in series, but they all just seem either, well, they all just seem too large. Like, there's the Through Night Catapult V5 or the Olight. Olight has a bunch of them. None of them just... I just like this one the most. There's also a couple convoys, but I'm not really into convoys. I'll, I might get some, I don't know. But anyway. So, this is a great light. It's not made anymore. So if you want to get one, you probably will have a, have a hard time finding one. You might be able to get one secondhand. If you could buy one of these, I would wholeheartedly recommend it, generally at least. But, like I said, it's not made anymore and you can't buy it from any retailer. So you might have to look around if you want to get one from second hand or whatever. Uh, if you are going to get one of those, the, if you do want one of these, you might as well try and find a version 2 because those are better. Like I said, this has been out of production, the version 2 has been out of, been out of production. And that light was replaced by the TC-10 version 2, effectively replaced at least. Um, which is a rechargeable light, and it does not... I don't know if you can use extension tubes, but it doesn't come with any at least. So it's essentially just a rechargeable one of these. Which is great. It's not even as bright as like the TN-12 is, which is a bit of a bummer for an, a single 18650, because... I think it's like 900 and something lumens, which is... I mean, still ridiculously bright, that's not a problem. This'll... Take my word for it, this will melt your eyeballs right out of your head. It has been replaced by that now. On Through Night's forums and stuff, because I have been on there, they have mentioned a TN no, a TN11S UT. I don't know if they're actually going to come out with one of those or what, but they have mentioned it. And from what I know, it, it could potentially be much better than this one is, because this is like XML U2 is pretty old LED now. Uh, if they use like the Cree XHP70 or XHP50 or those wouldn't be as throwy so they probably wouldn't be as good of a match for this light. But if you want a maximum output, if you went for one of those, you could probably push at least 2,000 lumens out of it with a, a double 18650 setup like this. Now they could again go with a different LED to get more throw like an XPL or whatever. Um, whatever they do, they could definitely make this I think the biggest thing would to make it more durable, just a better construction, anodize all the threads, make it thicker, fix this problem, uh, metal button, it'd be nice if, the, if both of these were metal buttons, but especially here, make this a metal button. I don't know that I would want it to be rechargeable, but uh, who knows if they can, they may do that, knowing them, they like, most flashlight manufacturers now want to make everything rechargeable, which I don't know if I'm really on board with that. I don't like the little rubber things, but um, that is a possibility. But as it is, this is a really great light, and I may cons I I want to get this fixed, and I may consider having this modded to put a better LED in here, and then put like a, a glowing O ring in there, and it would be like awesome, great. Also, it looks like a lightsaber. All right, now that I've rambled on forever, that's pretty much it. That's the end of my review. Thanks for watching. Share it on social media. 
I'm sure they will absolutely love this video, and then you can all subscribe to me, and the Fortnite will send me 50 free flashlights a month, and it will be great. So, if you like this video, like it, share it, subscribe it, or if you hated it, dislike it, and you can post hate in the comments, and uh, thanks for watching.